Now today I just had to take some time out of my schedule to make this video. It's a video about the most bizarre news report that I've ever seen in my life. A news report in which we saw one of America's most powerful men, the National Security Advisor, come onto their national television station to talk about a list of three nations that were mentioned by Marco Rupio that are posing a threat to the United States. He calls them adversaries to the United States. And when we heard about this list of these adversaries of the United States that are causing instability and fomenting some of the protests and influencing some of the protests that are taking place in America, my mind jumped to the obvious countries, China, Russia, maybe North Korea, and just maybe Iran. But what was curious about the list is that this, the National Security Advisor mentioned two nations. The first nation he mentioned was Zimbabwe. I want to tell our foreign adversaries, uh, whether it's a, a, you know, a Zimbabwe or a China, uh, that the difference between us and you is that that, that officer who killed uh, George Floyd, he'll be, he'll be investigated, he'll be prosecuted, he'll receive a fair trial. And after Zimbabwe, he mentioned China. And he seemed very aggrieved that he mentioned these countries about twice. What are we doing right now to counter those adversaries as they try to foment uh, more unrest here in the United States? China, Russia, you mentioned Zimbabwe. Yeah, look, Iran is, uh, has certainly been active in this, uh, uh, you know, in, this, in this realm as well. And, and we've got a number of tools in our toolkit, George, but we're, we're working very closely with our allies. Warning them about consequences that are going to come because of fomenting instability in the United States. Now, I'm not going to talk about the racism. Today, I want to talk about the fact that how is it possible that a small little nation like Zimbabwe can be a threat to the United States of America? How can a small little nation called Zimbabwe be a threat to a superpower and the most powerful nation in the world? Now, that is the question that we're all asking. However, for those of you who've been listening to me for the past three years or, or so, those of you who've been watching me and believing that I'm insane, I have said it time and again, that Zimbabwe constitutes the biggest threat to the United States, capitalism, Western democracy, and white supremacy. And the reason that I've always said this is pretty simple. When you look in history, since the National Emergency Act was enacted in 1979, 33 national emergencies have been placed upon nations. 33. And of those 33, three of them have been placed on this small little country called Zimbabwe. So this is basically tantamount to the United States has called a national emergency, a state of emergency, as we know it in Zimbabwe, on Zimbabwe three times. And they call these national emergencies or these state of emergencies after they had already gone to Congress and created an entire act for this small little country to impose sanctions called Zidera. After the sanctions called Zidera, they called on the first national emergency in 2002, a second national emergency in 2005, and an amendment in 2008 when Obama called for a national emergency on Zimbabwe because it was an unusual and extraordinary threat to the United States. Through that instrument, they were then able to introduce a weapon called the International Emergency Economic Powers Act to institute the Executive Order Sanctions 13469. That illustrates to you that Zimbabwe is a threat to the United States government. It is worded in the national emergency, and the question is why? And then how come this little country now is a threat to the United States and now it is also becoming an adversary that is influencing Americans on American soil? How can that be? How can a small little nation on a continent of shithole nations influence American internal workings? I have always said that Zimbabwe is a threat to the United States because by taking land, from the colonizer, by taking land from British settlers, taking land from American and British corporations, which brought the sanctions. Zimbabwe became a threat to the Americans. 
by taking control of its reserve bank, taking control of its companies, taking control of its economy. Zimbabwe, by the time it came under sanctions, had just had the second biggest stock exchange in Africa. And because of that, Robert Mugabe said, this country is a successful country, we need to indigenize it and we need to ensure that these companies are controlled by Zimbabwe. The bulk of those countries were American, they were British, they were Western. Hence, the Western nations came together to impose sanctions with the United States leading those sanctions. Zimbabwe challenged capitalism, it challenged colonialism, it decolonized, it took land, it took the economy, it took control of its currency, something that no other nation had ever done before, and that has become an, an emancipation call to the entire black world and brown world. Zimbabwe is changing international law. It is changing international customs by making sure that restitution of the dispossessed becomes entrenched in law and legal custom of the international community. And now, when the sanctions were instituted, Zimbabweans have stood up to challenge those sanctions as human rights violations. Part of the reason why you see sanctions being removed on Agribank is because Zimbabweans are beginning to challenge the legality of this human rights violation, let's call it a gross human rights violation, and this breaking of international law. We don't have the mouthpiece of media like the United States, but the United States has felt pressure. That's why it removes sanctions from Agribank and the Infrastructure Development Bank of Zimbabwe, because they're feeling pressured and they cannot justify their sanctions in law because they're against the people of Zimbabwe and they're against even politicians who have not been tried for these human rights violations that they talk about. And now, these are some of the sentiments that have some of the politically conscious Americans who are protesting these injustices in America, utilizing a country like Zimbabwe as a beta, a country like Zimbabwe as a news, a country like Zimbabwe as motivation for their fight for liberation. For as long as Zimbabwe has taken its land successfully, as long as Zimbabwe is riding out the US sanctions, it means that this small little country has stood up to a world's biggest bully and the world's biggest carrier of white supremacy. That is why I say to African Americans, we need to stand together if we are going to cry about police brutality. Because that leg that was on the neck of the gentleman that got killed is exactly the leg that is on Africa when there is Africa on African soil. And African Americans are part and parcel of the U.S. Army that comes to cause instability in Africa. That is African Americans participating in putting their legs on our necks. When America comes to cause wars for oil, when they come to sanction Africa, and when we have black, black ambassadors like Brian Nichols instituting racism, instituting human rights violations in Zimbabwe, that is African Americans tacitly participating in maintaining an American order because they receive the benefits of this pillage. The pillage of the United States benefits African Americans. That's why you are the richest black people in the world. That's why your musicians get paid well, your sports stars get paid well. They're being paid from proceeds of the violence that the Americans visit on Africa and other non-white nations. You are part of the problem because when you become part of the army, part of the police, part of the economic system. You're part of the musicians that sing music that demeans Africans, that criminalizes Africans, that keeps Africans sleeping and dancing instead of understanding politics. You're part of the problem. When you're receiving high salaries for playing sport, you must understand that some of those salaries come from the oil wells that are stolen from Libya, oil wells that are stolen from Nigeria, and all this oppression and the resources that are being stolen from Africa. So this is why Zimbabwe is a threat. It is a threat because it has resisted what African Americans are failing to resist. It has resisted what the rest of Africa is failing to resist. It decolonized, took land, took its economy, and that made it the biggest threat to the Western world. That also means that Zimbabwe should be the country upon which every black person rides on and is inspired by and stands behind for the decolonization of the rest of Africa and the emancipation of 
blackness. That's what I wanted to say today. That's why Zimbabwe is the biggest threat to the United States. It is because of the defiance of a small little nation and the influence this small little nation has to all native people, American Indians, who actually are the custodians and the real owners of America. And if they take Zimbabwe's precedence, they can take it forward, they can take back their land, and they can make it legal precedence for restitution and restoration to take place in this world. Stand behind Zimbabwe because Zimbabwe is the African story. It is a story of African defiance. In the same way that Haiti was that in 1804, we can win this war. And that's why you will have the National Security Advisor of the United States talk about a small, insignificant little country called Zimbabwe. Zimbabweans unite against U.S. war sanctions and make this country great.